Hi everyone, this is Bart Falczak from creativeimpatience.com. Today I will show you how to make a quick primary grade in SpeedGrade. Recently I've been working with uh, Canon Flowers from that studio and uh, one thing that we found out is that we need to create LUTs for uh, VFX to give to visual effects artists to make proper composites. So I quickly jumped into SpeedGrade and uh, I found out that uh, there is a certain order of operations that makes it uh, quicker and uh, I think is optimal for uh, this uh, type of footage. And this footage is from uh, 1820 teaser and uh, it will serve uh, pretty well to illustrate the purpose. As you can see, I have uh, just my primary grade on, on a clip and uh, what I uh, do to achieve a full dynamic range is I first uh, use contrast slider to bring my green channel to roughly the scale uh, that uh, is going to uh, occupy uh, from 0 to 100. I'm not concerned about uh, it moving outside of the scale because now I'm going to use the pivot point to bring the channel back in line. It's perhaps a little bit too contrasty, so let's bring it back here. Then I use offset control to make the blacks black. If this scale is not enough for you, then uh, I suggest you take a look at the vector scope and uh, see when everything becomes aligned with the black. And I think we are about here. That's uh, what we're looking for. Now uh, I'm looking here at the peak and I'm, I'm using the temperature slider. I'm going to align red and blue channels together. So, and I'm again, I'm, I think I'll use the vectorscope. Yeah, so here I think they are pretty much aligned. So now I'm going to use uh, magenta slider to equate the green channel to red and uh, blue. So again, Yeah, I think just a slight adjustment here. I can always now use gain to bring the white point back if I feel there's uh, too much contrast. And, and I can also tweak the final saturation to taste just to get a decent look for for the color saturation. Now, if you feel that there are there is some uh, color shift in, uh, in the midtones, then you would use the gamma slider. But right now, I'm perfectly happy with that. So, again, uh, let me illustrate the procedure on another uh, on another shot. First, green channel. Use contrast to bring it to scale. And I also, you can if you press shift, uh, the adjustment will be quicker. So I think we are about there pivot point to bring the, the channel back into the scale. Okay, too much, so I dial the contrast down. And again, use pivot to move red green channel. Now I will use the offset to try to get my black point. And as you can see here, it's not that simple because of a very heavy vignetting that's that is taking place here. And now I'm going to use temperature to equate red and blue channels, which again is not going to be that easy. So I'm also help myself with, with vectorscope. Okay. And I'm going to use now magenta slider to bring the green where I think it should be. Yeah, okay, obviously we have some uh, issues with the gain, so I'm going to bring back gain here. And perhaps I might try to add some blue to the neutral, uh, to the midtones to neutralize this red cast that's uh, happening here. You can see heavy vignetting here and this vignetting uh, occurs in, uh, in the blue channel. So what I should do if I really wanted to bring it back, I would do the vignetting to counter this uh, blue, but uh, this is beyond the scope of this tutorial. So I think we might be needing a little bit more blue in the white. Okay, so this is the optimal order of operations. First use contrast, then use the pivot point, then use offset. Then use temperature and magenta sliders to bring uh, the color to the highlights and then you can manipulate your uh, gain uh, to bring back the gain. So that's it. I hope you find this tutorial useful. So now go out and do something creative. Goodbye.